In this tutorial, I'll show you two examples discussing the relationship between the equilibrium constant and delta G. The first question reads, use tabulated free energies of formation to calculate the equilibrium constant for the following reaction at 298 degrees Kelvin. We go from N2O4 to two molecules of NO2. The way delta G and the equilibrium constant are connected is by this formula shown here where delta G is equal to negative R times T times ln of K at equilibrium. We already know R, it's actually a constant, and it's stated right here. We know what T is, it's given in the question. We don't know what that is, but we can find out what delta G is for this reaction. And that's done by using the formula underneath. Let's start by using this formula. We're told that the standard change in free energy for this reaction and when it's standard conditions, we apply this not symbol or this degree symbol, is equal to the sum of, let's interpret this part right here, the number of moles of the products, so we have one product, and there are two moles of that, multiply two, it gives us free energy of formation. I've already gathered these numbers here for convenience sake. Since we're dealing with NO2, it's 51.3 kilojoules. 51.3 kilojoules per mole. The mole units cancel out. Since there's only one product, we don't need to take the sum of anything else, and that's what this symbol represents. We will subtract this amount with what's found in the reactants. We have one molecule of that, so I'll write down one mole times. It gives us free energy of formation of 99.8 kilojoules per mole. Once again, this mole unit and this mole unit cancel out, and we should end up with a number that's strictly in kilojoules. Using our calculator, 2 times 51.3 minus 99.8, that gives us 2.8 kilojoules. Now we have this value, which we can substitute into this equation. 2.8 is equal to negative and that gas constant is 8.314. It's in joules, so you can either change this into kilojoules or change this number into joules. I'd rather change this number to joules, so I'll multiply this by 10 to the power of 3. This is being multiplied to 298, and we have ln of k, our constant. We need to use some algebra now to solve for k. It's not hard to do. I'll start with 2.8 times 10 to the power of 3. And I'll divide this by the product of these two. So divide that number by negative 8.314 times 298. This gives us a value of negative 1.13 equals ln of k. To isolate for k, I'll raise both sides of this equation as powers to the base e. So these are exponents, and that's your base. And what this will do is cancel out the ln and the e, leaving us with k, what we're looking for. So Euler's number raised to this number, and we get 0 0.3229. And we can stop writing after two decimal places. So 0 0.32 is the equilibrium constant. Let's move on to question two. Calculate delta G for the reaction at standard conditions when the temperature is 298 for the following reaction. What is delta G at equilibrium? So let's start by calculating delta G, and we'll use the exact same formula as before. That formula was delta G is equal to negative 8.314, multiplied to the temperature of 298, and we've been given the constant this time, so this is actually easy, 81.9. This number has three significant figures, so we should have three significant figures after the decimal place after calculating this. So ln of 81.9 gives us this really long number, but only these three are significant. Keep that in mind. Technically, we have four significant figures in this number. Multiply to negative 8.314 times 298, and that gives us to four significant figures, negative 10, 9, 1, 4, this 4 is insignificant, so I'll write down negative 1.091 times 10 raised to the power of 4, and this has to be 
in kilojoules. Right now it's in joules. If you want to make it into kilojoules, just divide by a thousand and you'll be good to go. That's delta G. That's your answer at 298. At equilibrium, what's interesting is Gibbs's free energy is a measure of how much potential a reaction has left to do and net something. So if the free energy is zero, then the reaction is at equilibrium and there's no more work left to be done, which means that delta G would have to be zero at equilibrium. No more works need to be done. And there you have it. Two examples discussing the relationship between the equilibrium constant and Gibbs's free energy for the reaction.